In this video, we'll learn about Docker, what it is, and why is it used. So Docker is a software platform that pretty much allows us to build, test, and deploy our applications very quickly. It packages the application in what's called container that has everything needed to run our application. With Docker, we can quickly deploy and scale the application in any environment or any platform. It's very similar to how Virtual Machine virtualizes software using the guest operating system. So the benefit of Docker is we can ship our code very quickly as it allows us to run anywhere on any platform. We don't need to install or do any setup on our end. The Docker container will have all the setup needed to run the application. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we want to install Docker. We're gonna head to Google and then pretty much a search Docker install. So I'm running on Windows, so I'm gonna install the Windows version. And the key thing is you need WSL2 set up. So let's install this. All right, so let's follow the documentation and let's use WSL2. All right, we're gonna restart our application or restart our, our computer. Okay, so our Docker is installed. We just need to update the WSL version. So let's follow this documentation. All right, so our Docker uh, server or Docker container is up and running. And now we can actually, let's try to build our container next. Okay, so the very first thing that we want to do is we want to create a new file and we are going to create a Docker file. So this will pretty much host our instructions on how to build our containers, what images we need, uh, what instructions we need to follow. So this will tell like how to build this project. And so we need an image that has, uh, that has Maven installed since we're using POM XML. So since we're using Maven as our build tool and we're using Java, we need to find an image that has both of that. So we're gonna head over to Docker images. So let's just search Docker images. And we're gonna go to the first link. And from here, let's search open JDK. And we actually, let's search from the one that has Maven. And let's search over to tags and we're gonna search for open JDK 17, since we're using Java 17. And we can pick any of these images. So the one I know I've picked in the past is this one, 3.83 Maven. So let's use this image. So we're going to pull from this image. So I'm going to copy this part. And then from here, we need to not pull from that image. So there's a command for that called from. So from Maven. So basically we're saying, okay, go to Docker image and then basically pull this image down. And this image has some of the couple tools for us already, such as Maven. It has Java 17 installed already in it. And so we have this project set up. So we have the Java environment set up for us. Next, we're going to use a copy command. So with the copy, we're pretty much telling copy over my local files from here over to the Docker container. So we're gonna say copy from this root directory, copy over pretty much all the files. For now, we're gonna say just copy over all of these files and move it to this directory or copy to this directory. And with this copy command, this directory doesn't exist. So if it doesn't exist, it's going to create that for us. All right, so next we're gonna say, now after you've copied over all these files to this directory inside the Docker container, switch to that directory. So we wanna work from that directory. So the command for that is work there. And we want to work from this directory. Next, we want to say, okay, now you need to build our packet, our jar for us. So we're gonna use a maven command to build that. And we don't have any tests, so we're going to skip the test testing for us. So this is the command in Maven to skip all the tests and then build a jar for us. So we're going to use clean package. So pretty much we're telling it to do these commands for us, clean and package. And now we want to say, okay, now after you have built the package for us, the jar for us, then you want to be able to run this jar. So we're going to pass in the command for that to run it. And the command for that is pretty much spring boot run. So this command is pretty much what it's doing. It's hitting this, when we hit the play button here, it's pretty much executing this command for us. All right, so our Docker file is set up. Next, we're gonna do, create something called Docker Compose. So again, with this Docker file, we're pretty much telling it how to set up our spring boot application environment. So we are going to have two containers, one for our Spring Boot application, which is an employee payroll system, and the other container will be for our MySQL container. So to easily set up this multi-container setup, we are going to create a new file 
called docker compose. So in this docker compose file, we are going to define how to run this multi-container Docker applications. And before writing this Docker Compose file, one thing I would recommend is to install this Docker plugin in Java, uh, in IntelliJ. So I already have it installed. This really helps us and it has IntelliSense built in. So, and it also has these services built in which monitor our Docker application as well. All right, so the first thing that we want to define is what version of Docker Compose we're, we're using or the Docker schema. So we're using 3.8. I believe 3.9 is the latest one. So we're going to be sticking with 3.8 for now. Next, we want to define our services. So we have two services or two containers. The first one is our MySQL. We're going to call this MySQL DB. We can call it anything we want. And then we want to say which image we want. So the same thing we want, we're going to say we want the MySQL 8.3 image. So we want to go to Docker Compose again and let's search for MySQL. So we want the, we, we're using the 8.033 uh, Docker version, uh, sorry, or the MySQL version. So let's just pull this image. Next, we want to say, okay, the, uh, what's the policy for restarting this? So we're gonna say for the restart policy for this is going to be unless stop. So pretty much what we're telling here is uh, all this restart, if, for some reason our Docker container goes down, it crashes, automatically restart it unless we bring it down ourselves. So that's what we're telling it here. Next, we are going to define an environment file, which we're going to write shortly. And for the environment file, we're going to say, pull it from the root directory where we are going to define this env file. And these are the environment variables that we're going to be passing in for our MySQL database. So the first one is going to be the MySQL user. So this is going to be our environment variable that we're going to be pulling from this env file. Next, we want to define the password. We also need to define a root password to access the main database or the main SQL database. And this is going to be the same password as this. Let's just keep it simple. Next, we want to actually define the database that we want to name. And we call it payroll DB. So let's copy this. And the final thing that we want to define is the host. I'm going to explain what this part I'm doing here. This is optional. So pretty much what I'm telling it is that be able to access MySQL database from any from our local computer as well. So we have MySQL workbench installed. Be able to access the MySQL server that's running inside the Docker container. So one thing I want to make a note is these names are very important. These are the environment variables for MySQL server that's used by Docker container. So these names have to be exactly the same. It needs to match. And this is actually listed inside the documentation of MySQL. So if you search MySQL Docker, and if we go to the documentation on more topics, we can see the, the environment variables that's used by uh, MySQL so this is right here. So these are the Docker environment variables that are used that we can set up. All right, so the next step that we want to define are the ports of where the server is actually running. And we, and we need to open up in a port as well. So we want to be able to access MySQL database from our local computer as well, or from outside the container as well. So we need to open up that port. And we are going to define two ports with an environment variable. And let's call that MySQL DB local port and the host port or the Docker port. And now we also want to be able to save our database as well. So we want to be we want to persist the data. So for this, we are going to define a volume group. And let's call this DB. And we are going to save this over here. So we are going to persist the data. So if we bring down our container or even kill it, we are going to be saving our data data. So if you bring up the server again, we're going to be able to get back the data again. All right, so our service for MySQL DB is defined. Next is our application uh, container that we need to set up. Or we need to say how to run this. So let's call that service app. And we are going to say this depends on MySQL DB. So with this depends on flag, what we're telling it is 
you need to first bring up this service. You need to first set up MySQL DB. After this has been set up, then set up the Spring Boot application. That's what we're telling it here. And you need to build it using this Docker file that we wrote, which is sitting in the root directory. So follow the instructions that are defined in this Docker file on how to build that Spring Boot application. And for the restart policy, we're going to say on failure. So pretty much if there's any failures or any crashes, restart the application for us. And the environment file that we're going to be using is the same one. For this, we're going to also define the port, so be able to access the ports from outside the container as well. So we need to open up those ports. Next, we are going to define an environment flag. And inside this environment flag, we are going to pass in the Spring profile. So which profile do you want to use? You want to use a local profile or you want to use a main one? And Spring has this flag called Spring Active Flag. And for now, let's just set this up as local. We also want to save the data for this. So we're going to say, save it to the M2 root directory. And now we want to be able to, when we start up these services, we want to say, have the, have the services in a interactive mode. So pretty much we, when we run it, we are going to see all the logs. We're going to see how the application comes up. So we want to see the outputs live. So for that, we can define the output, the SCD and output. We're going to set up these two properties. We're going to set this to true and also this other property TTY to true as well. And the volume name that we want to use is a DB one. All right, so our Docker Compose file is set up. Now let's quickly define this environment file. And let's create that. And here we're going to define these environment files. So let's copy this. All right, so the user that we're going to be using for MySQL is we're going to pretty much follow these. Uh, we're going to set up these exact same uh, values. So for our MySQL local port, we're going to set this as 3307. The reason I don't want to use the same exact port that I've set up here is because I already have a MySQL server on my local computer running on this exact same port. So I'm going to get a conflict. So I'm going to set up a new port locally that it's going to be connecting to the one in the Docker container. And for the IP, we're going to say use any local IP. So any IP addresses can connect to the Docker container uh, MySQL server. So for that, there's this wildcard called percent. We can specify, you know what, only connect, uh, only allow Docker container to connect from a specific IP. So only a specific IP can connect to the Docker container MySQL server. For now, we're going to say all the IPs can access it. So the Spring local port, we're going to use the exact same port that we have set up here, which is port 8080, which is a default port. So I don't need to actually define it here. Okay, so let's use a Docker Compose command. And Docker Compose, with Docker Compose command, it's going to automatically pull the, the images, build the application for us, and even run it, and, or execute it. All right, uh, looks like we're actually getting some errors. Let's see what's going on. Unknown life cycle spring boot. Oops. All right. So yeah, this is a problem. It's supposed to be like this. All right. Let's try building this again. So now when we do Docker Compose up, good thing is that it's not going to rebuild the entire image again. It already cached all the dependencies. So it's going to continue from pretty much where the error happened. Actually, it looks like it's, it's caching it. So that's an issue. So we actually need to bring down or delete these or delete this container. So the command for that is let's just delete all of it. So we're going to bring down all the containers and delete the containers as well. So this is the command for it. All right. Let's try to bring it up again. All right. So our application is up and running. So you can see, we can see all the live outputs that's happening. And the reason for that is we, because of these two commands, if we didn't pass in this command, we wouldn't know what would be happening. Okay, so let's test our application out. 
All right, so we were able to post an employee and we got a status code as created. Let's post another employee. And I'm using admin. All right, let's see if you can get all the employees. So we're using the local H2 database. All right, so I need to add authorization to it. Uh, we're using basic auth and we can use the admin. All right, so we're able to get all the employees from our database. So this is the local issue database that we're using. All right, so let's try to use the MySQL database this time. So we're going to stop our uh, application. So let's kill this. And we are going to create a new properties file for Docker specifically. So let's copy this one. And let's call this Docker. And we are going to make a couple of changes to this. So we are going to be using, let's just use the variables that's defined here in our environment variables. And instead of local host, we are using MySQL DB, the name of our service. And the port that we're using is local Docker port. Okay, so our properties are all set up. Now let's try to use this one. So instead of local, we are going to use the Docker. And let's see if this works. All right, we got a couple of errors. Let's see what's happening. Okay, we got connection refused. Let's see why that's happening. Uh, all right, I think I need to rebuild this container. So let me kill the containers. And let's rebuild this. Okay, so our application came back up. So it's actually fully started. So let's connect to, let's post an employee. All right, so we are actually able to create the employee. Let's post another employee. And let's see if we can get all the employees. All right, we are able to get all the employees from our MySQL database. Let's try to post a payroll as well. Uh, okay, yes, let me add authentication to it. Let's try to connect to the workbench. So we're actually connecting to the MySQL. Uh, so our MySQL workbench, it's connecting directly into the Docker container, MySQL server. So I already created um, a connection string to it. So we just pretty much add the connection. And instead of adding the connection, all I did was I named the connection, let's say, let's call this Docker2. And we are running on port 330. And that's where we have opened the port up. So remember, I mentioned this specific port. So this is a port that it's gonna uh, that we're opening the port that's gonna listen on. So our MySQL server and the Docker container is running on this port, and we're saying, you know what, connect to that server with this port. So that's pretty much what I added, and I call this Docker two. And for the username, we are using payroll user, and the password was testing one two three four five. All right, so we are actually able to connect to it. We can see test connection and let's connect to it. And let's write the query to pull the database, the tables. All right, so we got the payroll there for the employee and we can do the same thing for the employee table. So we should see two employees. I believe I posted two employees. Yes. So we also installed Docker desktop and we can see these are our containers. So this is the container that we built. Uh, and sorry, this is the image that we built. And inside these images, we have two containers. We have the MySQL container and we have our payroll application container as well. So we can see what port they're running on. And these are the images that we created. And this is the database uh, that we're persisting. So we're persisting the data as well. So if you're able to, you know, bring down the application, the container, we can get the data back again. All right, so we have finalized our application and have containerized it as well. To recap, in this video, we learned how to install and set up Docker in a local computer. We learned what Docker is. It is a software platform uh, that allows us to build containers, package, and deploy our applications very quickly. And it also allows us to run these containers on any platforms. We also learned how to build images using Dockerfile, which is where we give commands on how to assemble the images. 
And then we use Docker Compose to define how to run these, how to run the multi-container Docker application, uh, where we had a MySQL container and also the employee payroll container as well.